웹이나 아, 우선 저 바쁘신데도 불구하고 어, 이렇게 참여를 해주셔서 감사합니다. 오늘 그 이스라엘 오토텍 어, 온라인 세미나를 어, 이렇게 개최를 어, 이, 저희 어, 이스라엘 대사관 경제무역 대표부와 그다음 이스라엘 수출공사 공동 주관으로 해서 참여를 어, 이렇게 주관을 하게 됐고요. 어, 뭐 요즘에 잘 알, 알다시피 코로나 바이러스 때문에 비접촉으로 지금 온라인 행사를 많이 진행을 하는데 사실 저희 오피스에서 지금 처음으로 진행을 한 행사여서 어, 이렇게 많은 분들이 좀 참여를 해주시고 그래서 굉장히 좀 어떤 감사의 말씀을 드립니다. <웃음> 오늘 진행하는 순서는 어 먼저 저희 그어 이스라엘 어 경제무역 대표부의 대표이신 야니브 골드버그 님의 인사말을 시작으로 해서 어그 다음에 이제 어 오늘 특별 연사로 그 폭스바겐 그룹의 이스라엘 그 R&D 어 오피스의 어 헤드 오브 어 죄송합니다. 헤드 오브 스트레터지 앤 비즈니스 디벨롭먼트로 계시는 어 우리 저 미스 어, 미스 삼닷 사기님의 어, 발표가 있으시고요. 그 다음에 이스라엘 스타트 업체들이 어, 발표 어, 알파벳 순서로 발표하게 될 겁니다. 그래서 처음에 브로드맨 세븐틴, 그다음 카리티카 AI, 그다음 사이퍼 SIP, 트라이 AI 그리고 마지막으로 바이아 비전을 끝으로 해서 오늘 행사가 마지막이 될 거고요. 행사를 마치시게 되면은 제가 또 간단하게 클로징 멘트는 하긴 할 테지만 마치고 나서 저희가 온라인 행사에 대한 어, 간략한 서베이를 준비를 했습니다. 이메일로 별도로 드릴 텐데 그거는 추후에 별도로 더 어, 답변을 주시면 됩니다. 어, 그러면 말씀드린 대로 오늘 어, 행사 시작을 어, 저희 그 ATO 코리아 대표이신 그, 어, 야니브 골드버그 님의 어, 인사말로 시작을 하겠습니다. 야니브, please have a, uh, your remarks. Okay. Yeah, thanks, June. Uh, hello, everyone. 안녕하세요. Good morning to everyone in Israel. Uh, my name is Yaniv Goldberg. I'm the head of the Economic and Trade Mission, Economic and Trade Office. of Israel in Korea, the Embassy of Israel. And I'm very proud to have uh, five Israeli companies and one representative of uh, Volkswagen Connect in Tel Aviv uh, with us today for an automotive and auto tech um, webinar or an online seminar. We are also happy to have with us representatives of the Israeli Ministry of Economy and Industry and also a rep representative of the Israel Export Institute who are our partners in this event. Um, I would like to, to mention that uh, Israel is not a manufacturing country of, of automotive, of cars, but definitely Israel became in the last few years a kind, some kind of a powerhouse for auto tech. And we saw various investment uh, into that, into that uh, area of technology, uh, either by uh, multinational companies like uh, Intel, which invested a uh, 15 billion US dollars into Mobileye and just recently uh, almost 1 billion US dollar into Moveit, an Israeli platform of smart mobility. We also saw um, Hyundai uh, Motor Group investing into various Israeli companies. The last one of those was uh, Gauzy, uh, a smart glass uh, company from Israel that uh, got uh, uh, an interest by Hyundai. We are seeing various multinational companies investing into Israel in the last couple of years, not only in the automotive sector, but with, in various other sectors, opening their R&D uh, offices in Israel, scouting services, offices in Israel, and so forth. And one of those multinational companies is uh, Volkswagen, which opened their uh, innovation hub uh, in Israel uh, a few years ago. We are very glad to have with us today uh, Ms. Hamdat Sagi, the business development head and strategy uh, from Connect in Tel Aviv. And I think also Ms. Vox is also with us today, uh, the head of that office in Israel. So thank you both of you for, for being with us today. Uh, I asked uh, Ms. Khadnat Sagi to open this webinar by introducing the case study of uh, Volkswagen in Israel, because I believe this is a very important case study also for Korean companies. Uh, although Hyundai Cradle has their, uh, Hyundai Model Group has their office in Israel, which is name is Hyundai Cradle, uh, we believe strongly that more Korean companies should open some kind of a representative office in Israel, uh, look into the Israeli sector much more uh, 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 strongly. And I think that learning from other, other companies' experience, companies like Volkswagen, is uh, quite important. Uh, after Ms. Handatsagi, we will hear the, the stories of uh, five 
very innovative Israeli companies in the uh, auto tech uh, sector. And I, I'm sure that this uh, event today will lead to some uh, interesting follow-ups, uh, if I may say so. And I wish you all a very pleasant hearing and a, a very uh, interesting webinar. So, uh, Ms. Hamdatsagi, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning from Tel Aviv, everybody. I'm very excited and very honored to open this uh, seminar. Thank you, Yanni, for the um, invitation. I'm very thrilled to also be working with former colleagues in the ministry. And as you said, in the next 15 minutes, I hope to give you some inspiration and some impulse um, and thinking um, about what we do as Volkswagen Group in Tel Aviv. Um, I will share my screen now and uh, hopefully it will go smoothly. All right, just a second. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, okay, so you're on mute. Okay, no problem. I will just uh, start my presentation. This is us. You can actually, actually our building is hiding somewhere uh, in this picture. Uh, we are in the heart of Tel Aviv and that's where I'm speaking from as well. Um, so it's very exciting to be able to do things like that with uh, Korea now. Um, as Yanid said, um, Israel is really the hub of uh, smart mobility these days. Uh, it's a real wonder since we've never been a manufacturing uh, uh, country for cars except a, a vehicle that was once produced by the name of Susita and uh, actually didn't succeed much. But uh, today Israel is the leading force in the global um, uh, ecosystem of um, smart mobility. And if you see Tel Aviv, if you've been to Tel Aviv, uh, you can see uh, a lot of people using micro mobility uh, solutions and uh, really early adapters of technology. So we, we do see how Israel can fit perfectly into that. Um, as you said, Yaniv, just this week, uh, we were um, uh, announced that Intel will acquire an Israeli startup by the name of MoveIt for $1 billion, um, which is great news, especially in COVID times, but uh, really positions Israel, since, since Intel also acquired Mobileye, and Mobileye is really behind this acquisition, I would say, this even strengthened Israel um, when it comes to smart mobility. Uh, just one word about this acquisition for the knowledge of all of us, uh, Mobileye is really moving into the whole mobility as a, ser as a service uh, landscape and MoveIt, which is the um, transportation app uh, and has a lot of data uh, and information can really help them to position themselves and give value when it comes to the data about customers' behaviors and so on and really boost their activity in that sense. I'm not going to go into the uh, hard details. I will basically share this slide later, uh, but these are some of the numbers of 2019 reflecting Israel's um, strength when it comes to uh, uh, the figures. Um, 15 OEMs and tier one companies are now based in Israel in different mobility, in different innovation uh, models, and we are one of them. Last year, uh, BMW opened the scouting office Ford announced uh, the opening of a research center um, and hopefully um, we'll go back to track and see uh, the situation going back to normal after this uh, challenging time. Um, and who are we? Basically Connect is the open innovation hub of Volkswagen Group in Israel. We were founded in 2018 uh, and our mission uh, is to scout and match deep tech Israeli startups to the Volkswagen Group brands, and then take those uh, introductions and scale them into sustainable collaborations and projects. Alongside that mission, we are also pushing and driving culture change and an innovation mindset back to our headquarters and I will explain more on how we do it. 
Connect is basically part, we are a fully owned Israeli company, 100% uh, subsidiary of the group in Israel. We are part of a VW Group Innovation uh, Team. This used to be the research and development, that was a former name, and now uh, there's a new name, which is Group Innovation. And we have locations around the world, as you can see in California, in Asia, uh, we have uh, an innovation center in uh, Japan and in Beijing, and also colleagues who are based in Korea. Uh, we have our procurement office. Hopefully they're on the call, I'm not sure. Uh, so we have colleagues there as well. Connect is the newest member of this network. And as I said, our main mission is really to promote and establish open innovation uh, methodologies and projects with our group. And the way we work is we basically uh, focus on three main pillars. The main one, which is our bread and butter, is about technology scouting. We scout and look for the solutions in the market. It can be startups, it can be in the academy, it can be in mature companies. We evaluate the technology and then we match them to the needs and of our group, of our group brands, uh, departments, R&D uh, teams, innovation teams. That's one of the most important pillars of our work. Our main uh, objective in doing this scouting is to match the right solution to, of course, the, the stakeholder and the, the brand and the group and create collaborations together. The second pillar is about business development. We are looking for partners in the market to promote and position and, uh, our group and be as active as possible in this very interesting marketplace. And the third pillar is about transformation cultures, transformation and programs and culture change, which is what I mentioned before, and is really about pushing a different mindset and of course, I'll give some more example. But I want to start with the, with the scouting process. When we founded Connect, and Stephanie is also on the call, and she's been in the group for 10 years, uh, we basically worked hand in hand to think, what does the group really need in Israel? Do we need an accelerator for startup? Do we need an R&D center? We realized two years ago that the greatest need is to identify what is the pain point what is the challenge? What do we do to help our group be more innovative, be uh, basically a sustainable, a leader of mobility in the world? And therefore we said, let's first identify the challenges and the topics uh, from our brands and from our group entities. We ask them to share uh, their topics uh, as basic as possible. Then we went out to the market and we started scouting for the startups. So we do the scouting with our network of partners. We have a team, which I will show later in the slides, uh, that is very uh, well networked and also has experience uh, and background in understanding the local market. We find uh, the startups and then we evaluate them. Face to face, we meet them. We go to their start with companies and the startups that we'll meet here know us. Um, we basically understand their technology and try to, to think whether it fits our group, whether it's ready to have a POC with us, whether we can scale it, not just for one brand, not just for Audi, for example, but perhaps uh, use it and deploy it across the group. Um, so after doing the scouting and evaluation, we do the matching. And as I said, our main goal in KPIs as well are doing collaborations, which are mainly POCs, uh, but also um, uh, any type of uh, collaboration, commercial agreements, series integration, and I'll show some of our achievements in the last two years uh, here in the market. The focus topics are really the, the ones that uh, are the group uh, that we work with is, is focusing on. So it's about autonomous driving, it's connectivity in AI, electrification and sustainability. 
Um, and we've also identified a great potential in pushing topics like Industry 4.0 and, of course, cybersecurity uh, to our headquarters. So here we, we, we basically communicated to our headquarters, hey, there's a lot of uh, interesting uh, startups doing predictive maintenance, um, for example, and let's introduce you to those startups. So we've done a lot of deep work around that and cybersecurity. Volkswagen Group has a partner in the market by the name of Motive that is uh, focusing on uh, cyber for automotive, perhaps you've known, you know them, but we're also looking out for uh, cyber solutions for our enterprise, any IT solution that can fit our needs. Um, some of our results in the last uh, two years um, is, is, as you see, it's, it's a lot of numbers here, but I'll focus only a few ones. First, we've done 60 scouting uh, missions and, and the scouting, the, the need comes from, I would say, three main stakeholders. One is group innovation. As I said, this is our headquarters. This is our uh, team. Uh, and they're looking into more early stage, early development technologies that will go into our vehicles in the next five to 10 years. So there we do a lot of uh, scouting in the academy, for example. Um, then moving on to the brands, brands like Volkswagen, uh, brands like Audi, Skoda, Porsche, you probably all know them. They're looking into startups which are more mature. Uh, and are ready to deploy after a POC. So we, we then, of course, get the needs from our brands uh, on those uh, type of technologies. And the third stakeholder is procurement. Um, the traditional procurement uh, office uh, entity in the group, which um, is still working with conventional suppliers in Israel, and we have 12 of them, those in Israel, is also feeding us with the needs. And they've moved also into more innovation scouting in recent years. So what I'm trying to describe is that we have a great overview of all the topics and the needs coming from many, many stakeholders. It can be very challenging, of course, um, but it's also an opportunity. And we try to align and be transparent as much as possible, because with such a huge group, um, naturally, sometimes um, things are not, you know, well informed. And so we find uh, scouting topics or POCs that were already successful in one brand and there's no need to repeat them with other brands. And so we share. We have uh, uh, forums in which we're sitting with our local tech teams where we share and try to be as much transparent as possible and efficient. Uh, to save costs for our group, but also really to bring in the best startups and not to overlap each other and scale the, the ones that were successful within the group in a very sufficient and fast way. I think that's our advantage. We're a small team. We're based in Israel. Uh, we're working in a very lean way, and I recommend every innovation hub to basically um, work in that matter um, as well. Um, so some of the numbers here also have to do with brand workshops that we keep doing with our group. Um, and I want to give two more last examples and then open it to, to, to questions. I think I'm, I'm in my 15 minute zone. Um, I've mentioned the uh, business development activities and we realized that uh, we don't need to just pull the need, we also need to push it. So we initiated a startup challenge last year. Uh, here you see us, it's me and Stephanie holding the uh, <laughs> checks, virtual uh, mock check, checks. But the story here is really that we asked 12 of our brands to give us their most painful challenges and share it with the ecosystem. Be transpa transparent on what's your major pain point at the moment. And we've had Skoda, and Volkswagen uh, commercial vehicles and Volkswagen brand coming back to us and saying, yeah, we want to focus on autonomous driving, on in-cabin uh, experience, on sensors, and please find us the solution. We published those challenges in LinkedIn, in social media. 
we, we were very transparent and we called the Israeli Starbucks to apply. We've had 32 applications and the prize after a long evaluation um, or a deep evaluation, not long, was uh, funding of POCs. Mainly, we didn't want to just give money, we wanted to give smart money. So we funded each of the winning startups here, 25,000 euros to have a POC. And the judges were actually coming from our group. So the head of SV, the SVP autonom for autonomous driving was, was the uh, head of the jury. It was just an out of the box experience from many of our colleagues to be a, a jury, to judge, to evaluate. But at the end of the day, we were able to push two very interesting startups do it in a super fast way, fund their, their POC, and now both of them, SIBO and Fotelix, SIBO is about uh, um, industry 4.0, they can uh, predict, uh, it's about predictive maintenance and, and prevent of loss in your factories, and Fotelix is a startup that um, basically knows how to deploy autonomous uh, uh, vehicles. So this is just a great example, and we're not the only ones that are doing so in the Israeli market. The last slide I want to share today is about our transformation, uh, our culture change, because it goes hand in hand. Uh, we believe in Connect that in order to push innovation, to do innovation with startups, you have to have a certain mindset. You have to be open for it. You have to believe and be enthusiastic about innovation and working with external partners. So therefore, we organize in Israel learning journeys, innovation learning journeys, for our managers, for our colleagues, for three, four days. And also we bring in expert teams for two, three months coming from Porsche, coming from Volkswagen uh, commercial vehicles. They were here before COVID uh, sitting with us, experts, engineers coming with their topics, joining our team and basically seeing how an Israeli innovation hub is working. And most importantly, um, coming back to their brand with this spirit and with actual projects with Israeli companies. So here you can see one of the uh, lectures I gave to Audi Academy. Um, that's our team and this, one, this is my last slide. Um, this is uh, Stephanie and she's also on the line so she, she will probably be happy uh, to answer any questions. That's me um, and we have Two tech scouts, Mayan and Itzan, you can see them on the slide. Um, we have a marketing person, Shelly, she's, she's in charge of all our internal innovation and external, uh, I, I mean, marketing activities. We have a representative leading the RSO activity, uh, Angie, Angelica. She's, um, she's our procurement person. She took her knowledge from working with the convention suppliers and helping startups to onboard to reduce all barriers and so on. And we have now recently a security manager. He's also a CISA. So I hope I didn't run too fast. <laughs> um, Yaniv, you moderate and you tell me if I'm okay with the time. I think so. And if there's any questions, uh, we're here to, to answer. Yeah, so actually, uh, Mr. Song, Jiyun Song is the moderator and uh, he will okay. probably offer the Korean audience to ask any questions also in Korean. So please, Jiyun. Yeah. Um, thank you, Hamdan. <laughs> uh, 저 여기 참여하신 분들 중에 혹시 질문 있으시면은 어 여기 밑에 보시면은 Q&A가 있습니다. 그래서 이쪽에 어 영어로 안 적으셔도 되고요. 한글로 적어 주셔도 어 전달을 해 드릴 테니까 자유롭게 궁금하신 점은 어 기대를 해 주시면은 저희가 그 전달을 해서 나중에 답변을 드릴 수 있도록 하겠습니다. 어 우선은 저기 요 커넥트에서 참여해 주신 한다님께 감사드리 감사의 말씀 드리고요. 예. 그 다음으로는 계속 이어서 어그 이스라엘 업체들의 개별 발표를 진행을 하도록 하겠습니다. 어 브로드맨 세븐틴이 다음 타래고요. 예. 브로드맨 세븐틴에서 어 발표를 하도록 하겠습니다. Please Oad. Okay. Uh, BK, can you please show the present share your screen? Okay. You see? Yeah, 
Thank you. Hello, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ohad. I'm a VP Sales from Broadband 17. Uh, we have a very interesting presentation. I'll do a very quick uh, uh, intro about the company, and then I'll allow uh, Mr. Wu, uh, our um, Korean Sales uh, um, Director, to go over about everything. PK, uh, next slide. So just uh, in a short uh, about Broadman 17, we are uh, a software company. We were founded uh, uh, four years ago. Um, our headquarters is in, is in Israel. Uh, we have three other offices, uh, one in Detroit, Michigan. The other one is in Tokyo, in Japan. And uh, the last one is uh, in uh, Seoul. Um, we are um, providing um, Perception software for ADAS and automated driving. Uh, our solutions are based on patent uh, deep learning technology that we designed and invented, especially for the automotive uh, uh, for the automotive industry. We are putting focus in level one, level two uh, uh, solutions that you'll see in uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, our solutions are already uh, implemented uh, and commercially available in various markets. One of them is in, in Korea, and uh, Mr. Wu will explain a little bit more about that. Our mission, <clears throat> sorry, our mission in general is to bring uh, the AI capabilities uh, for the automotive industry, which currently are mainly in the premium models today, into the mass market making it accessible for everyone and, and every, uh, everyone to use that and, and utilize all of these capabilities. Um, our solutions are already uh, NCAP certified in various uh, geography. Uh, we are working with uh, uh, tier ones and OEMs, but also with aftermarket providers and fleets. Uh, and again, Mr. Wu will explain more about that, all right? Uh, uh, BK, please. Okay. okay. 안녕하십니까. 저 한국에서 고로노만 세일즈 담당하고 있는 오병구라고 합니다. 여기 지금 저희 프로덕트에 대해서 ADAS와 AD, AD 프로덕트 수트에 대해서 간략하게 소개되어 있는 단표로 설명드릴 거고요. 지금 저희 솔루션을 이용한 파트너에 대한 내용들도 나와 있고 그 다음이 국내 사업자들, 국내에 있는 ODM들 하고 하고 있는 프로젝트에 대한 내용도 좀 포함이 되어 있습니다. 지금 여기서 보시는 것처럼 저희 브로드만 세븐틴은 프론트 카메라, 서라운드, 블라인 스파트 액션 카메라, 인티그레이티드 레어 스마트 카메라까지 솔루션을 제공을 해드리고 있고요. 지금 현재 저희 그 PR로다가 국내에서 릴리즈된 내용으로다가는 싱크웨어와 지금 되어 있는 내용으로 나와 있고요. 거기 애프터마켓 플릿 네이터스 시스템으로 싱크웨어랑 저희가 커머셜 제품을 런칭을 했습니다. 그리고 코이토, 베락처럼 보시는 것처럼 ADB, 글레어 프리 헤드램프로 해서 어드티브 헤드램프 솔루션도 제공을 하고 있고요. 그 다음이 국내에서 지금 스마트 레어 카메라 쪽과 블라인 스마트 세션으로 해서 코리아 티어 1들, 그 다음에 US 티어 1하고 프로젝트를 진행을 하고 있습니다. 지금 조인하신 분 중에 모트렉스 분이 계시는 걸로 확인을 했었는데요. 모트렉스와 지금 관련된 내용들로 해서 협의를 많이 진행을 했었습니다. 혹시라도 궁금한 사항 있으면 말씀해 주시면 좋을 것 같고요. 저희 브로드반 세븐틴 비전 퍼세션 스택으로 해서 지금 보시는 것처럼 2D, 3D, 멀티클래스 오브젝 디텍션, HTO, 오브젝 트래킹, 타임 투 컬리전, 디스턴스, 로컬라이제이션, FHW, LDW 이런 여러, 여러 가지 기능들 딥러닝 베이스로 지원하는 여러 가지 어플리케이션들도 같이 지원을 해드리고 있습니다. 물론 실제 커머셜 버전을 진행하시게 된다 그러면 튜닝이나 옵티마이제이션도 필요하실 거고요. 기본적인 어플리케이션들은 다 구현이 되어 있는 모습을 보실 수 있으십니다. 데모를 잠깐 보여드리겠습니다. 이건 보시는 것처럼 자동차와 사람, VR류들을 따로따로 구분을 하고 있습니다. 지금 저희가 이스라엘 도심에서 실제로 테스트를 하고 드라이빙 테스트를 해서 진행한 저희 솔루션을 진행한 내용들입니다. 보시는 것처럼 페데스트리언이나 
자동차, 베이클 등을 프로토 카메라에서 잘 인식을 하고 있고요. 지금 VR 요즘 많이 언급되고 있는 VR 관련해서도 자동차와 오토바이나 자전거나 그 다음에 사람들 서로 구분하는 모습을 보실 수 있으실 겁니다. 이게 다 머신러닝이나 기본의 어떤 클래식컬 비전 테크놀로지가 아닌 딥러닝 베이스의 AI 딥러닝 테크놀로지를 이용한 기술로 보시면 되겠습니다. 물론 풀리 소프트웨어입니다. 그리고 두 번째는 요즘 많이들 말씀하고 계시는 블라인 스파 디테션에 대한 프로젝트 데모 영상입니다. 보시는 것처럼 달려오는 그 좌측이나 우측에서 달려오는 차량에 대한 거리 그리고 이 지금 빨간 라인 보이시죠? 이 빨간 라인 안으로 들어오면 이 지금 차에 접근하는 그 다른 후속 차들이 굉장히 위험하게 접근하고 있다는 알림을 드릴 수가 있으십니다. 잠깐 보시겠습니다. 지금 보시는 것처럼 각 네모 백팅글로 안에 관련해서 디스턴스까지 포함이 되어 있습니다. 지금 보시는 것처럼 저희 요즘 좀 고급 차들에 나와 있는 좌측이나 우측에 접근했었을 때 알람이나 LED를 깜빡거려서 차량에 접근하고 있다는 알려주는 표시를 이렇게 자동차 오브젝 디테션으로 해서 알람인 기술과 연결하셔가지고 워닝을 보실 수가 있으십니다. 그리고 지금 저희가 가지고 있는 코어 테크놀로지에 대한 내용입니다. 저희가 가지고 있는 코어 AI 테크놀로지 알고리즘 자체는 저희 자체적으로 특... 잠시만요. 질문 있으신 것 같은데요. 제가 이거... 아... 요 자, 답변은 제가 따로 드리겠습니다. 이 질문들... 제가 죄송합니다. 질문들은 예. 제가 예. 나중에 그 예. 별도로 또 참여하신 분들께 한번 전달을 드리고 추후에 예. 또 받을 수 있게 그렇게 저희가 어, 조율을 하겠습니다. 예. 지금 여기 나와 있는 코어, 코어 AI 테크놀로지 알고리즘으로 되어 있는 내용은요. 저희가 퍼블릭으로 오픈되어 있는 구글 웹사이트나 다운로드 받으셔서 테스트 하실 수 있는 AI 알고리즘이 아니고요. 저희가 컴퓨터를 받은 컴퓨터 웨이세어링 뉴럴, 네트, 뉴럴 네트워크라고 보시면 됩니다. 전체적인 효율은 20배 정도 기존의 퍼블릭으로 나와 있는 오픈 베이스의 알고리즘보다는 20배 정도의 효율을 보실 수가 있으시고요. 그 다음에 가장 중요한 거는 이 AI 테크놀로지를 이용하시게 되면 학습에 대한 트레이닝 플랫폼에 대한 것들이 많이 요구가 되십니다. 그 지금 보시는 것두 번째 보시는 것처럼 오토 ML 오토모티브 트레이닝 플랫폼 자체도 저희가 제공을 해드리고 있습니다. 그래서 매뉴얼 워크를 미니마이즈 해드릴 수 있고요. 그 다음 어노테이션이나 트레이닝 플랫 트레이닝을 좀더 자동적으로 손쉽게 하실 수 있도록 되어 있습니다. 저 어드밴티지는 이렇습니다. 100% 풀 딥러닝 베이스 소세션이고요. 말씀드린 것처럼 풀리 소프트웨어입니다. 하드웨어는 전혀 인발부가 되어 있지 않습니다. 그리고 스테이트 오브 아큐레시 지퍼 모터모티브 로우 파워 프로세서라고 해서 저희 지금 이 로드만 솔루션 자체는 암 베이스나 그 기존의 SOC에서는 암이 제일 최적화되어 있고요. 그 다음이 FPGA나 다른 여러 가지 SOC들을 이용하시는 경우에 저희 솔루션이 풀리 인티그레이션이 가능하시고 다른 뭐 그래픽 억셀레이터나 여러 가지 뉴럴 네트워크, 뉴럴 프로세서나 이런 것들이 필요 없으신 경우도 있으십니다. 그럼에도 불구하고 하이 퀄리티, 한마디로 정확성, 어큐러티, 어큐러시 레이트를 조금 더 많이 더 확보하시도록 도와드리고 있고요. 그 다음이 지금 이 딥러닝 베이스의 소프트웨어, 딥러닝 베이스의 에이다 솔루션을 개발하시는 데 있어서 많이들 걱정하시는 게 봄코스트십니다. 그러다 보니까 컴퓨터 파워를 미니마이즈 하면서 더 낮은 봄코스트를 갖다가 확보하실 수가 있으신 거고요. 그 다음이 프로세서와 카메라 어그노스틱 소프트웨어입니다. 말씀드린 것처럼 소프트웨어 언니 프로그램이다 보니까 프로세서나 카메라에 대해서 뭐 저희가 특별히 요구하는 사항은 없습니다. 커스터머께서 원하시는 SOC나 카메라 그 사양을 저희한테 제공을 해주시면 그거에 맞춰서 소프트웨어를 튜닝해드리고 오토마이즈 해드립니다. 하지만 단지 그건 있습니다. 암코어 베이스로 하셨을 때 A53 코어 기준으로 진행하시면 딥러닝 베이스로 
이 ADAS 기능을 구현하시기에 충분하시다고 말씀드릴 수 있습니다. 그리고 지금 베스트 비전 익스피어런스라고 해서 저희가 여러 가지 ADAS 프로덕을 다 지금 서포트를 하고 있고 계속 개발 중에 있습니다. 복잡한 엠비디드 하드웨어 플랫폼 뿐만 아니고 간단한 뭐 심플한 ADAS 뭐 SOC를 유용한 ADAS 프로덕을 개발하시는데도 크게 무리, 무리가 없으실 거라고 생각이 됩니다. 그래서 지금 여기서 기술적으로 다가 많이 궁금하신 사항도 있으실 거고요. 그 다음이 뭐좀더이 브로드반 솔루션에 대해 브로드반 세븐틴 솔루션에 대해서 궁금하신 사항들이 분명히 있으실 텐데요. 관련해서 이스라엘 쪽 지금 상무관님 통해서 연락을 주시거나 아니면 제 연락처가 공유가 되는 걸로 알고 있습니다. 제 연락처를 받으셔서 바로 연락을 주시면 찾아뵙고 더 자세한 설명 드리시도록 하겠습니다. 자, so, BK, I, I, I saw that there are two, uh, uh, there are a few questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe we oh, will answer. Okay, Ohad is a Mr. Song. Uh, we have collected all of the questions after this webinar, and he will send us a question. Yeah, but I think I, I think we, we have time to to answer. We have uh, we have enough time to answer. Maybe we'll just uh, okay. cover two questions. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you are most welcome to to answer the questions live, please. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, w with regards to the first questions of the performance at night, then um, of course that uh, um, everything that we're showing here is working in in all weather con conditions, right? We have been and in deep learning, the data is very very important, and we have been collecting data for the last three years, and we have data in in various uh, um, weather conditions: day, night, rain, uh, foggy, uh, uh, urban. Uh, highways and of course in different geographical locations. So uh, from that perspective, uh, when we're doing a project, we're aligning the data uh, that we have collected together with the, with the tier one or the aftermarket company that we are working uh, with uh, uh, to align the, align the data according to the requirements. Uh, we mentioned before that um, uh, our solution is already NCAP certified, as, as you know, as part of the, the NCAP, it, it needs to be a very accurate solution. Uh, and of course, we are uh, working on, 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 on this on all environments. So that's, uh, that's to answer uh, uh, onto this question. Um, regarding the second question that there was uh, regarding hardware environment. So, uh, um, with our technology that is very flexible, we have the ability to utilize better, uh, we have the, the option to utilize better any hardware uh, uh, to accommodate a, a AI. We can start with the, a, with the ARM cores, with CPUs, uh, right? We did implementation and retrofit for our software for existing hardware with the current situation in the world where new investment of a lot of new products is kind of uh, maybe will be uh, uh, a little bit slower in the next couple of months. Uh, utilizing existing hardware and extracting more AI out of it is, is very important. So we have the ability to start with ARM cores. We can work with any of the embedded devices, uh, Qualcomm, MediaTek, uh, 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 any device that has ARM cores inside from A15 and above. Um, and of course, going into a, a, a more a automotive embedded a, a hardware like Renesas, a, a Umbrella, a, a NXP, TI, and others, a, a, we have implementations and integration with all of these, a, a, all of these hardware environments. Okay. So that's uh, to give an answer for, uh, for both questions. で、지금질문에대해서충분히답변이됐는지는모르겠고요아마됐을거라고생각합니다그리고추가질문있으시면은그요 관련해서 기술적으로다가 궁금하신 사항이나 필요하신 자료나 이런 것들이 있으면 저한테 연락을 주시면 감사하겠습니다. 네, 그럼 이상으로 브로드맨 세븐틴 발표를 마치고요.
다음 순서로 카르티카 AI에서 발표를 하도록 하겠습니다. 다시 한번 말씀드리지만 어, Q&A는 밑에다가 자유롭게 그 남겨주시면 은 어, 여기 패널리스트 분들이 실시간으로 담, 답변을 주실 수도 있고요. 또 이번 행사 끝난 다음에 별도로 저희가 또 어, 수, 저, 어, 전달을 해가지고 답변을 전달 드릴 수 있도록 하겠습니다. Okay, the Cartical AI, please uh, go ahead with your uh, presentation. Hello, good afternoon over there in uh, Korea. My name is uh, Barak Matskevich. I'm the COO of uh, Cartica. And let me just go. Okay, so Cartica is a spin off from the mother company called Cortica. It's not a typo. Cortica uh, is an AI company that was established already 13 years ago, and it was following a research that started uh, in 2003. Um, over the years, there were already $100 million investments around the technology in different uh, application area. Um, and automotive is one of the latest one that uh, we implemented it. Previously, it was in the security market, which was also announced last week in more the face recognition area, uh, mobile and internet. Um, the automotive activity was incubated in Cortica for about two years, started uh, three years ago. And last year, we have launched it as a separate uh, entity called the uh, Cortica. The technology of Cortica is really coming from a slightly different uh, background than the deep learning approach in artificial intelligence. And it followed a research that started from looking into the way that the human brain, or actually the mammal brain, is working in order to understand how come such architectures of neural networks can perform very well compared to how the technology uh, started from the academy and later on in the industry developed the deep neural networks. And that was a paradigm shift from actually moving from the supervised artificial intelligence and deep learning. Uh, as many applications are using today into an unsupervised approach learning because this is the way that the human brain is working. So over the uh, research and later on the development of technology, it's uh, today uh, protected by about 250 patents, um, both by Cortica and recently also in the automotive with new patents in the Encartica. We already collaborated and later on I'll tell a little bit about the uh, partners that we're working with uh, in the automotive use case to see how such a technology can perform and deliver uh, the standards of the industry uh, in the key application that we are uh, working on. In terms of products that the technology is uh, uh, targeting, um, as it was mentioned uh, by Broadman 17, NCAP, which is the key basically expectation today to meet the safety requirements along the roadmap of NCAP. Uh, we're already now in end of 2020, but uh, the roadmap is defining in 2022 and later in 2025, what are the expectations of the industry to have a technology delivering the uh, appropriate uh, performance. Uh, so we took uh, the technology into a, a product we call SafeCore uh, for front-facing camera. First of all, this is the key application. The technology uh, work with vision, and historically this is what we did for many years uh, previously, but it can also work around the other sensors such as radars, even ultrasonic sensors, uh, lidars. Actually, any natural signal generated by a sensor uh, can move into the perception technology developed by uh, Cartica. Um, in terms of Horizon, uh, so today we have the ADAS market, but a lot of the companies are already looking beyond the level one, level two, or two plus into the higher uh, autonomous levels and the requirements there. And also here, uh, we have developed a, a different approach. It's called the uh, E.ON. It's the ensemble of narrow AI agents, uh, which is a modular platform for safety and autonomy uh, features. In terms of the team, uh, so the company is led by Igel Reichelgaus. is one of the three co-founders of the mother company of uh, Cortica. Uh, recently, we had uh, Carl Thomas Neumann, both uh, joining as an investor, but as a management member. And previously, uh, it was the CEO of Continental, of Opel, the Volkswagen activity in China. Uh, and today is a board member of uh, Hyundai Mobis. So maybe some of you uh, over there in Korea are already familiar with uh, Carl Thomas. 
the rest of the team, as you can see, coming also from automotive background, Alessandro Manca, uh, who lead our sales, uh, come from 25 years in uh, Continental as well. Uh, we are back to the financially uh, by Toyota, BMW, Continental, uh, and also the financial investor, our crowd. So what is unique when you're taking a, an autonomous AI or unsupervised AI approach compared to the deep learning? First of all, in terms of the training process of networks, so we see that a, a lot of data is one of the essential parts of deep learning uh, approach. Taking data and annotating it, it's a huge effort for everyone in the industry, whether it's the tier one OEM that are collecting data, Sometimes when you collect data to mount the camera in a certain position, but then if you have another car line that the camera will be positioned in a different location, you do need to collect again data and train your networks uh, to such an approach that the um, network will be optimized to the new position of, of the camera. Especially if you're moving into commercial vehicles when the cameras can mount even in a three meters high compared to let's say less than a meter in a passenger car, Again, training is different because the object looks slightly different from, from that height. If we're looking at us, at human beings, even if you go into a commercial vehicle and then you start to drive, you're not kind of recalibrating your brain. It's something that we're doing fairly naturally. And also in the Kartika approach, we are not using a tagged information. Actually, when we are working with a tier one or OEM uh, on evaluation and some of the development, we ask them to get footage from their camera, and we're agnostic. Uh, we are not specifying what is the resolution, what is the optical path of that camera, but we ask them, please provide us footage recorded by that camera, not annotated. Our technology will uh, learn by itself to detect the objects. Later on, we are selecting which are the objects that are required for those applications, the safety applications. The usual uh, uh, objects such as pedestrian, cars, trucks, traffic lights, traffic signs are the ones uh, that the system learn to adapt and to recognize. So in terms of process, it's very quickly. We are not asking annotated data. There will be an annotated data sets later on for validation by the tier one. But the fact that we uh, are using that way, it's very easy to add new classes that let's say the OEM is interested. So if you want your vehicles to start and detect, for instance, traffic poles to allow cars to navigate also in construction areas. Um, then for us to teach the system, or show the system, this is the object you need to learn is extremely fast because we don't need to tell them, annotate for us now 100,000 of those objects, etc. cetera. Um, the other big difference, the uh, computation load. So not using DNNs allow us to work in a very flat architecture, actually only six, seven layers, and it's a fixed network, uh, which implies immediately on the scalability of the compute platform. Today, uh, we are delivering actually a product on a low compute platform as the Renesas V3M. Uh, we also now uh, upgrading it to V3H if more features are required but it implies that you can deliver product with a low cost uh, platform. I think it was mentioned also uh, by um, Broadman 17, cost is uh, becoming a very important aspect of every solution. And I think going forward, it will be even more important. So that can reduce the cost of a solution significantly. Actually, when we work with the tier ones, they noted between 30 to 40% lower than existing uh, leading solution uh, solutions like as the Mobileye. Uh, in terms of the uh, higher level of perception task, this is also important. If you're looking into your application to start and uh, differentiate now between pedestrians, there is a difference between child or adult uh, because you want to create a dip different application profile. So AEB profile for a child will be different than, uh, for instance, the profile of an adult walking. Uh, this is something that uh, in terms of the segmentation, it's easier to do in that class uh, because also for us as human beings, we are understanding very quickly related to the context, what is expected by that uh, object. If you're looking into numbers, how uh, the technology is compared to leading solutions, you can see basically in terms of the requirement stops and the power consumption, uh, it's significant, it's about one tenth from uh, the existing solutions. 
that also led to the fact that uh, tier ones we're working with can do now one box solution. Uh, as you may know, in your implementations today in automotive, a system are also requiring some active cooling uh, if, if the power consumption is very high. And then if you mount it in the basis of the mirror, you are having some engineering challenges uh, of cooling. So low power consumption become also a very important factor in designing the new uh, solutions. So if I summarize in terms of the uh, products line, so NCAP products along the uh, roadmap is the uh, key delivery that we're doing now. We're looking into a more uh, enhanced product called Safe Core uh, to add more features and more advanced features also towards the level two plus and the level three uh, and implying the lower price uh, or price reduction, 20% uh, in this case. Uh, it's 50% if you're going for more basic uh, features. And, and the, the last one is also starting to integrate uh, the second sensor of type. The most popular now uh, in terms of demand is to combine the radar and uh, the camera. Both are done in the same um, technology uh, of Kartika, again, not deep learning based. If you're looking into the timelines of delivering the solutions, so already at the end of last year, when we completed to work on the NCAP uh, projects, end of this year, we're looking um, to release uh, the safe core, including uh, the uh, more advanced features. Also in terms of uh, addressing markets as commercial vehicles or motorcycles, this is yet another interesting case, because in such a, a vehicle, you are tilting the camera while it's driving and training cameras in tilted images is quite challenging. If you take today a camera and you tilt it by 20 degrees, uh, you'll see that it will have a lot of difficulty to detect the objects uh, because it was primarily trained on, uh, on uh, very stable and horizontal uh, uh, positions. So motorcycles is uh, work that we're doing with some of the OEMs to introduce a system that can uh, maintain the same level of detection at any, any angle that the motorcycle is tilting while driving. And in terms of the rest of the features, you can see that uh, there are milestones to deliver platforms on other uh, compute uh, powers, not only SOCs. Today, we are primarily working on a readiness platform that was selected by the tier ones, but already moving to FPGA uh, and some other SOCs uh, that the um, OEMs have selected. I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, common problems in terms of edge cases. One of the issues that are coming from the fact that you need to um, annotate information and cover as many edge cases as possible, brings you to the um, risk that the vehicle at some stage will come into a situation that it cannot uh, detect or perceive uh, the object because it, it was not trained by them. So one of the advantages then, if you provide just driving uh, videos that we can show the system, again, it doesn't need to be annotated, you cover more and more percentages, percentages of those uh, edge cases. We're also working on using simulations, so not necessarily only video uh, feeds, uh, but simulations done by computers with uh, quite high resolution of the images. So again, here we can train a system just by looking into many scenarios that the simulation is generating without the need to annotate them. Barak, uh, yes. can I ask you to try and wrap it up uh, as we yes. have the time? To, uh, you got it. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here you are. That was uh, the last slide. If any questions? Okay, so I don't see any questions at the moment, and if we will have afterwards, we will uh, deliver them to you. Thank okay. you very much, Ajun. Uh, 네, 일단 카르티카 AI 발표를 마치고요. 어, 다시 한번 말씀드리지만 어, 질문은 아래쪽 그 Q&A를 통해서 자유롭게 언제든지 필요하신 대로 기재를 한글로 해주셔도 좋고요. 부탁드립니다. 다음은 사이퍼 SIP에서 발표를 하도록 하겠습니다. Um, presenting on behalf of uh, Cyper SIP? Oh, Cyper SIP. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, just a minute, let me share the screen. Yeah, just a minute. Please also share your video. Yeah, 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 in a minute. Okay. Great. Yeah, let me, just a minute, let me uh, show the screen first. It's not, okay, just a minute. Okay. Um, can you see it now? Yeah, we can see and you can turn into full uh, screen, the presentation. Yeah, that's... And please have your... Okay. Hi, Hi everyone. Uh, good afternoon and good morning here in Israel. Uh, so my name is uh, Eldad Kaspi. I'm one of the co-founders of uh, CypherSip and I'm uh, uh, the CBD uh, of the company, the Chief Business Development. Um, as you know, uh, what drives uh, uh, to comply with the regulations today and the, the drive for consumer applications inside the automotive arena, um, you need more and more electronic systems which impact the vehicle costs uh, dramatically. Uh, if we had maybe five, uh, four or five ECUs in the early 80s, 40 years ago, today we have in a car because of the ADA systems and the radar and telematics, infotainment, uh, more and more ECUs above uh, more than 100, uh, 120 ECUs in a car, which impact the cost of the car and it's growing. Actually, uh, it's going to be up to 50% and more of the cost of the car will be the ECUs and the electronic systems, wires, etc. Um, the big challenge is that we have uh, hundred, about 100 million new cars in each and every year. In each and every car, uh, we have uh, up to 125 ECUs. Uh, it means more and more wires and uh, more and more uh, connectivity and data over the same network. And uh, the need is for, uh, I would say, um, uh, high-speed communication, uh, extra bandwidth, uh, while keep the safety and the uh, cost uh, effectiveness of, of the solution, uh, as well as to comply with the uh, backward compatibility of the existing uh, standard and protocols. And the main issue is to make all these uh, uh, changes without changing the infrastructures and the standards. So our solution in order to increase the, what we do is that we, are the company that increase the bandwidth uh, in a safety-based and low-cost uh, manners. Uh, we're enabling uh, uh, low-cost and safety uh, communication and security solutions inside the vehicle. Uh, today, we enable uh, two, we have two uh, product lines, I would say. One of them is the uh, high-speed communication, the protocols. We're enabling uh, more than 25 megabit per second over CAN, CANFD, protocols, uh, it's double than the Ethernet uh, 10 base T trying to make in the uh, marketplace. Uh, it's still low cost because we are riding over the existing uh, CAN family protocols and we are back, uh, backward compatible, compatible with all the, all the standards like the CAN bus, the CAN FD, etc. And we are enabling uh, up to uh, X16, 60 times more uh, data uh, over the same uh, message. On the other side, uh, we keep, uh, we do security. We are the only company that uh, do a deterministic uh, authentication uh, uh, for cyber security inside the car. We know not only the destination of the message, we know who is the sender, why the radio or the infotainment is trying to send a message to your steering to get you off the road. So we go with the message and by that we authenticate the message, we know who is the sender and we can protect uh, uh, the vehicle. Uh, increasing the bandwidth uh, up to 25 megabit uh, per second over the existing uh, network, enabling you to do the key distribution, encryption keys 
over the existing uh, infrastructures without changing the CAN bus and the CAN FD system. And uh, of course, uh, by increasing the bandwidth over the network, we enabling uh, uh, over the updates all the way from the cloud to the ECUs in the car bidirectional and some other applications that we will uh, discuss in a minute. So how we do that? Um, we uh, do a kind of modulation. If this is a canvas message, original can message from 40 years ago uh, that can deliver only one megabit per second by overlay large packets inside over the existing frame, uh, we enabling without changing the original protocol, we enabling inside this message uh, jumbo frames that enabling us to create uh, more than 25 megabit per second over the existing CAN protocols, CAN, CAN FD, FD etc. And by that, we enabling uh, also Ethernet and IP over CAN as well. Uh, just down here, you can see that we enabling uh, more than uh, uh, 1,024 uh, uh, bytes over the same message without interrupting the original message, without disrupting the distributing, uh, distributing the uh, original uh, uh, protocol, and without changing the, the network and the, the the wires are the same. And the same technology can go not only for automotive; it can goes for uh, multiple uh, applications in the industrial IoT, uh, EV charging stations on the street that are using canvas or Chademo, etc., and of course aerospace, which are using uh, the same uh, wired communication uh, prototype. Uh, as for the competitive advantages, uh, you can see here the, the our our uh, our protocol, the CAN SF Plus, with the 25 megabit per second over CAN, and the CAN XL, which is the new uh, standard that will come into the market in a few years and of course the Ethernet that everybody loves. Uh, the Ethernet is 10 base T, uh, about 10 up to 12.5 megabit per second. The CAN Excel will be around 10 megabit per second. We do 25 plus megabit per second over the existing uh, protocols. And by that, we are the fastest in the market. Uh, our, we are high speed, double than the Ethernet. Uh, we are robustness because we are riding over the existing it's worldwide standard. We're now changing the standard. Same network, same wires, same protocols. We're enabling uh, 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 same safety components. And uh, of course, the low cost. Uh, since we are riding over the existing network, same wires, same connectors, same software, uh, our solution is uh, the most cost effective, strong security, and some other uh, advantages that we have over the other protocols that are coming into the market. Uh, the beautiful thing about our technology is that you don't need us all over. If you have on the same network, the can Canvas network, you have 100 ECUs today, uh, you can choose to use our technology inside uh, 50 out of 100 ECUs or 10 out of the 100 ECUs, only the critical and the safety components you don't need us on the uh, body control, for example, okay, or on the uh, small ECUs that you're using for, for uh, uh, cheap uh, applications. So you can choose to use our technology uh, inside uh, very few up to uh, tens of ECUs out of the uh, total 100, 120 ECUs that you have on the car, in the car, without the need to change the network. It's the same network topology, okay? The same twisted rail wires, same connectors as said, and this is a huge, huge advantage to the OEMs in manner of costs of changes. Uh, some of the uh, use cases that we are engaged, uh, uh, we are enabling uh, Ethernet over CAN as said. Uh, I will show you in a minute uh, what we presented in Tokyo and in CS, uh, uh, in last January, in a minute, uh, we're enabling uh, by increasing the bandwidth over the existing network. Uh, we're enabling over the updates, firmware updates, software updates without shutting the car. You don't need to shut down the car like Tesla. 
you can keep running the car using the canvas or the kind of the uh, protocols, but using our uh, extra bandwidth in order to do the over the updates uh, between the cloud and the car. Uh, ADAS communication, uh, you can utilize our system of technology over the kind of the infrastructure, we're enabling, uh, of course, uh, video, audio, and some other uh, nice uh, applications inside the uh, vehicle uh, uh, cockpit and the ADA systems. Um, and something that we do in uh, right now, we're working in Japan and in China, is the time critical control loops, such as the think about the steering, the electric vehicle uh, steering uh, system to close the loop between the sensors and the TCU or the steering system uh, over, can, uh, over canvas, it's almost impossible. Uh, you need at least two times, three times, four times more bandwidth and uh, high speed communication. Uh, we enabling it uh, over the existing uh, twisted pair network. Uh, uh, this is something that only our technology can do. And as said, we are doing a deterministic cyber uh, solution uh, on the same network as well. Um, as said, the same the same technology can go not only for the automotive arena, but also also into the industrial and uh, building systems, aerospace, and other uh, applications. For us, it's the same. Uh, the go-to market, uh, by the way, we are a silicon company. Uh, right now, we have our software only as well as the FPGA ready. We already, our technology was uh, checked. Uh, I will show you after that. Uh, we already uh, check our technology in the most advanced uh, automotive labs in Germany. Uh, our go-to market is uh, the same way that everybody goes. Uh, the demand is coming from the OEMs, of course. We are working with all the major OEMs today. And our go-to market is through the tier two and the tier one companies uh, back to the OEM to uh, uh, work uh, according to their demand. Uh, intellectual properties. Uh, our co patent is already public. You can all uh, see that the, if you want, you can see the, the, uh, the core patent uh, is already there. We have three other uh, core patents uh, pending and we have four other patents uh, on the road uh, to be uh, pending. Uh, this is uh, one of the use cases system that we presented uh, uh, in January in Tokyo and in and that, CF. And then, yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, there are too many left, so can you wrap up in a few minutes? Yeah. yeah. So this is uh, what we did uh, in January. Uh, we enable. We showed how we can enable high definition video and audio over uh, the existing uh, can, uh, Canvas system, CanFD system, uh, the same uh, twisted pair uh, wires. And um, we would love to share with that, one with you on that. Uh, about the team, uh, our CEO, Niso Moyal, is coming from uh, Mobileye, which was acquired by Intel, as you know, for more than uh, $15 billion. Uh, I'm coming from Melanoc, chip makers. Uh, and uh, the team, uh, the te technology team, are coming from the uh, underneath of the Prime Minister office in the automotive and the aerospace arena. And Yaron Shafrir, who is on the line together with me here, is uh, uh, more than 20 years into China on the automotive and the venture capital uh, arena. Uh, this is it. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, Arda, thank you very much. Uh, 그 질문 있으시면은 어 자유, 자연스럽게 예, 예 자유롭게 예, 밑에 Q&A에다 남기시면 됩니다. 예, 다음은 트라이아이에서 발표를 하도록 하겠습니다. Hello everybody. Uh, that can you stop the screen yeah. share? Yes, just a minute. What's happening here? Yes. Excellent. Right. So, hello, everybody. My name is Ziv Livne. 
I'm VP Product and Business Development at TriEye. Just share my screen. Okay. So first of all, uh, thank you all for attending this webinar. What I'm going to talk to you uh, in this uh, short session is about how shortwave infrared camera is solving the low visibility challenge for ADAS and autonomous vehicles. Um, basically, TriEye, we are a company that is based in uh, Israel. Uh, we're a semiconductor company, Fable semiconductor company, uh, that is based on almost a decade of nanophotonic research from the Hebrew University. Uh, our team comprises of PhDs in, in device physics, process design, digital and analog design, electro-optics engineering, and also deep learning uh, research. Uh, our investors include uh, uh, Intel Capital, Porsche Ventures, Grow Ventures, and additional uh, financial investors as well. Uh, we're all aware of the race for autonomous cars, and there's still a long way to go until we actually see these cars in scale roaming the streets. But what we already see today are these semi-autonomous uh, products. Uh, ADAS features like uh, lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, emergency braking systems, and all of these systems that are working great, they're turning us into better drivers, uh, preventing injuries. Uh, but the problem of these systems today, one of the major challenges is that they're not really operating when you really need them in the best weather condition or low light conditions. And sure, there are great sensors out there, uh, LiDAR, cameras, radars, and when you have clear blue sky like I have here behind me in uh, Tel Aviv, everything is working great. You have the sensor fusion has enough resolution, enough contrast, enough information about the scene to make reliable and safe uh, driving decisions. And the problem is, is when you have these um, uh, low light conditions like uh, foggy conditions, uh, uh, dust, haze, smoke, a glare from the sun or from other vehicles around us. And in these conditions, then actually the uh, sensor fusion solution is not really working. Only the radar system is working. And in that case, you don't have enough information. Um, not only that, but you also have these invisible hazards on the road, like uh, people walking around with dark clothing, dark for animals, uh, black ice on the road, which none of these sensors are actually able to, uh, to see. Uh, the problem is that most accidents actually happen in these conditions. They don't happen when you have clear blue sky. They happen when you have not enough, not enough good resolution, not enough uh, good information about the scene to actually make reliable and safe driving decisions. And this is a huge problem because more than 80% of the accidents actually happen in these conditions. If you want to have more information about uh, how do we get to this kind of statistics, you can uh, jump into our website and download our white paper about this topic, uh, tryi.tech. Uh, the solution that we're offering is a short wave infrared camera. It's the spectrum between 1 to 1.6. And the benefit of this spectrum is that it's actually able to see much better than what a visible camera is able to see. And just to show you a few examples, this is the ability to see through dust. And this is a visible camera. This is a short wave infrared camera. And beyond the fact that you can see through the dust, as you can see here in these two images, uh, it's also important to know that you can see the person sitting behind the wheel of the car. And why is that important? Because it means that you can use glass lenses and also you can mount this behind the windshield, which is a preferable location for OEMs and tier ones uh, such as yourself because of the positioning, you don't have to worry about the cleaning system uh, and you don't have to worry about the design of the vehicle, which is an important uh, factor as well. And not only that, but the same way that you can recognize that this is a car, you can actually use existing AI algorithms, which saves you the effort of you know, driving millions of miles, re-annotating data, recollecting data. You can actually use the same uh, algorithms that you are using today. Uh, another capability is also the ability to see through fog. Uh, we don't have a lot of fog in Israel, uh, but this was uh, created using a fog machine. And beyond the fact that you can see through the fog, also interesting here is that the person here He's not really wearing white clothes. He's actually wearing black clothes. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you're wearing black or camouflage color or stripe or anything like that. All the people will appear as white because in short infrared, we don't see colors, but what we do see are materials. 
uh, taking advantage of this capability, we're able to better recognize pedestrians and dark for animals and also able to offer additional features like black eyes detection on the road ahead. And I'll get to that later in this presentation. Another ability is also the ability to see at night, as you can see here in this image. This image was taken passively, but uh, it's always possible to pair this with an, illu an illuminator and then to gain uh, the ability to see even if you're driving, let's say in a tunnel or something like that, where you don't have enough photons in the air. Um, okay, moving forward. Uh, this is just to show you what I was talking about before, how you can actually use existing AI algorithms. So in this case, we use an existing algorithm, YOLO by TensorFlow. Uh, if you want to see uh, which algorithm that we use, you are more than welcome to go to our uh, website, download the white paper, and also see uh, which algorithms that we use here. And just by fine tuning with only 4,000 frames, we're already able to see cars, pedestrian, trucks, uh, motorcycles, and uh, basically uh, in very high true positive rate. Um, more to touch about how you can actually better see animal and pedestrian. So uh, this person here that you might miss in the visible camera, but you can see very well in the sphere camera. And these images were taken during the day. By, uh, and so it's not only relevant for adverse condition, but also for improving the capability in daytime condition as well. Also this person here, which you might uh, mistaken for a tree in the visible camera. And also this person here, which might blend in the background, but in the spirit camera is very obvious uh, to see and recognize. Not only that, but we are a uh, dog friendly. So you can also recognize the dog for animal much better in the sphere camera. The reason for that, we also have an application research engineering team in TriEye. So we did some research to understand why we're able to see dog for animals much better uh, in the short infrared spectrum, and it's because a concentration uh, of melanin is actually what is creating the dark color. And moving from, uh, this is a graph of absorption as a function of the wavelength, and moving from the uh, visible spectrum to the sphere spectrum, you can see how the absorption decreases by more than order of magnitude, which makes a lot more light returning back to you. Um, not only that, but we also want to be able to prevent these type of accidents, as I was mentioning before, there's black ice on the road, the driver is not able to see it, sleeping on the ice, and a terrible accident occur. Um, using the short infrared spectrum, you can see that uh, asphalt, wet asphalt, and black ice basically will look the same in the visible spectrum, as you can see here in this image. But in the sphere spectrum, you will see huge differences between uh, 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 asphalt, wet asphalt, and black ice. So you can actually differentiate between them very easily, uh, which makes it possible for the first time to actually identify if there's black ice in the road, even 50, 60 meters uh, away from you using a short infrared camera. So if the uh, short infrared cameras are so great, why are they not already utilized today? Where they are utilized, uh, they've been utilized for decades using a, a component called indium gallium arsenide, unlike a CMOS-based camera. Ingus is very, very expensive. A high-resolution camera can cost you over $100,000. It will be the size of a small mini fridge. Uh, and also the lead time will be about a year and a half. So not very relevant for mass market applications. Mainly used today by the fence industry and aerospace industry uh, to solve the low visibility challenge and by the science industry to actually uh, see and recognize materials uh, remotely. Uh, so this is the most important slide in this presentation. So basically TriEye enables short wave infrared capabilities on a CMOS based sensor based on almost a decade of nanophotonic research. Um, this is something that is world's first uh, and beyond the fact that it is possible that we are able to do it. We're also able to do it in scale. We're already working today with the leading CMOS foundry that is fabricating this sensor based on our unique design. And I'll get to our timeline uh, in the next slides. Uh, this is the camera that's going to be available end of this year. It's a 1.3 megapixel resolution camera. Um, and important to note that the most important IP here is the sensor itself. It's here. All the other components are just like a standard camera. So if you're a tier one and you're thinking about 
how hard is it going to be for me to integrate your sensor into my uh, camera system, then it's not, uh, it's not going to be an effort because uh, the interface eventually of our sensor is the same as any other uh, uh, CMOS sensor. Uh, Timeline wise, uh, try it right now. We have a QVJ resolution camera that we're already working with our uh, current partners. Porsche is one of those partners. We have additional uh, OEMs and tier ones that we're already working with and collaborating with them. Uh, we'll have end of this year, the 1.3 megapixel resolution uh, camera. We are manufacturing these cameras in low volume so we can actually collaborate and do business development. But eventually for us, we see ourselves as the sensor a manufacturer, but to support evaluation programs, we are also uh, producing the camera itself. Um, and that's it. Any questions? Um, Jip, actually, the, yeah. you have uh, more time, and uh, there's a uh, one question from the Korean audience. So um, it's up to you. You can answer that in a bubbly, or the, you can type down later. No, sure, I can answer it. So, uh, William is asking if Tria can supply the CMOS-based sensor with the perception software as well. So, uh, just to answer that, uh, Tria eventually we see ourselves as the sensor provider. We don't see ourselves as, you know, actually creating the uh, the perception algorithms. For that, there are great companies out there like uh, Kotika that is uh, that we're just talking here. Uh, Via Vision is going to be talking uh, after my session, uh, uh, Broadman 17 as well. Uh, I think one of the major benefits for us as a company is that you can actually use existing AI algorithms. This is what I was showing in, in the video before. Uh, so for us, we actually see this as, a, as, a, as an advantage because it actually saves you a lot of effort because you can use existing visible algorithms that were already developed uh, for almost a, a decade now. Okay, there's one more question. Um, the power okay, product, the power finish. So uh, now there's a question about what is the power efficiency. So uh, the power efficiency, because eventually we are creating a CMOS sensor. So it's just like a standard, uh, you, you should think about just like a standard CMOS uh, uh, sensor. So also the power efficiency is the same. Also regarding uh, uh, the, inter uh, the interface is the same. Also when you're thinking about interfacing this, uh, uh, with which kind of lenses do you need to use? So again, you can use glass lenses. Also regarding vibrations, uh, uh, um, shock, all of those things that also regarding the, uh, the IP. A, a, a rating is also going to be uh, the same as a standard CMOS camera. And um, maybe also important to note, if already I have some more time, is the timeline wise, uh, we have the Raven that's going to be available end of this year, but then we have another sensor that is coming out, Raven 2, which is going to be uh, going out in Q2 2021, which is going to be already automotive uh, qualifiable. Uh, already today, with the collaborations that we have today with OEMs and Tier 1s, we're working together with them and we're getting their feedback to actually make sure that we are creating uh, the best uh, product market fit possible. Uh, so uh, this is just the first generation, but uh, theoretically we're also able to uh, increase the resolution, change the aspect ratio, uh, all of those things but this is something that we really want to get the feedback from the market and then to create our next uh, uh, generation of sensors. Okay, the, that's the question up to now. And uh, if there's a uh, more questions, I'm gonna deliver to you. Um, 네, 그, uh, try IE에서 발표해 주셨고요. 네, 다음으로는 오늘 마지막 이제 발표입니다. 그 바이아 비전에서 발표를 하도록 하겠습니다. Um, Mr. Ronnie Cohen. Hello, I'm Ronnie Cohen from Vivision, CEO and co-founder of Vivision. And uh, I will present, can you see my presentation now? Yes, it can be seen, so you can make it expand. 
okay. for, for screen. So, yeah. okay. so my vision is doing environmental perception for uh, autonomous vehicles. It means that we are taking the input from the different sensors around the car, cameras, lidars, radars, and we generate a detailed description of everything around the car. The car, the pedestrians, the free space, lanes, small obstacles, unclassified obstacles, everything that is needed for the driving decision. It's called the environmental model. And our solution is a software solution that resides within the ECU. So we're not doing the sensors like Tri and, and, and others. We're doing the software that analyzes the sensors input, all the different sensors, the road data from all the different sensors, and generate the environmental model. Now, this uh, problem was tackled in the industry initially by doing the processing separately on each sensor. So you do the processing on the camera right? and you're trying to detect the cars, pedestrian, free space. The problem was that it was maybe good enough for level one, level two solutions, but not for higher levels and it, not even for uh, advanced level two solutions because the reliability uh, of these uh, detections here is not good enough. Therefore, they added the LiDAR and radar. Each one has its own processing, but each one on its own is still not reliable enough. And then when they're trying to do fusion to generate the environmental model, when you fuse um, three, sorry, when you're fusing three non-reliable detections into uh, and trying to make a reliable uh, environmental model, it doesn't work. Well. The solution for that is to do raw data fusion, which means that you're taking the raw data from all sensors directly to the ECU, all the pixels of the camera, all the measurements of the LiDAR and the radar. And here you have to write new algorithms that will be able to uh, converge and process all the data together and generate a reliable uh, detection. The problem with raw data fusion though, is that there were two main concerns. One, it's, it may be very comp uh, complicated and with further complex the system. And the other one is functional safety. If you're bundling everything together, uh, will it be functional safety if one of the sensors is failing? That's where we get into the picture. Biovision had a f has a full environmental model system that uh, both provides the promise of a reliability of raw data fusion, uh, as well as provide the functional safety and efficiency elements. I will describe it shortly. Uh, on the first part here, we are fusing the raw data from all the sensors into one unified, perfectly matched and synchronized image of the environment. We call it the RGBD model, which is basically a, a high resolution, colored 3D uh, image of the environment. We perfectly uh, calibrate and, and match all the different sensors. We've got a very accurate ego motion to compensate for uh, the motion of the car, uh, for time difference between different sensors. Uh, but we, in order to get to high resolution, and when I mean high resolution, I mean that for every pixel on the camera, I've got also uh, not just the color, but also the distance. And as you know, the 3D sensors, the LIDARs and the radars are significantly low resolution. So in order to do that, we developed unique patented algorithms called app sampling algorithms that are capable to learn the environment as the car is moving, moving from frame to frame and generate a high resolution 3D model, even though the, the expensive 3D sensors are in low resolution. Once we have such great, perfectly synchronized and matching high resolution model, then we can do better detections here on the other side uh, with lower comp uh, uh, computation. So we can detect the, all the classified objects like cars, pedestrians, etc but also we are very strong on unclassified, uh, unknown, unexpected, small obstacles, debris issues now, which is in the focus of many of the OEMs. And then we uh, integrate everything into an environmental model, uh, which includes a bird eye view, 3D bounding boxes, and on each uh, detected objects, all the needed parameters, location, orientation, very accurately on all of them. Let me show you some videos that, uh, that explain uh, better than words what we are doing. Uh, and by the way, this whole system is a full system. I can show you the, actually the full block diagram. 
this is actually how the uh, product looks like. And you see a lot of lines and routing here uh, in which we actually compensate for all the fallback modes. So in any case of any failure of a sensor, uh, one or even two sensors, we can always route it to a, to a system that will handle with the remaining sensors until and still enable to, to the needed functionality of this scenario. Now, let's look a little bit uh, on images and videos because this is a real system already on a car driving and uh, working in real life. Uh, this is just to show the power of upsampling. You see here a road and a uh, Velodyne 64 uh, LiDAR measurements from kind of a bird eye po a point of view. You see the low resolution, very difficult to detect the car. This car actually is here, very, very hard to see. After upsampling, the resolution, as you can see, dramatically increase. So this is before and after upsampling. And look also on the resolution on the road, and you can understand why we can do better job in detecting small obstacles. And this is how it looks in, uh, in real time. This is a 3D a model that we generate as the car is moving. This is not a video because the, the camera is here where the cross is on top of the car. This is a high resolution colored 3D model. And just to show you that it's high resolution 3D, I will zoom in and turn it. So if you've seen LiDAR images, this is our equivalent to a LiDAR image. Look at the resolution. Every pixel here has a distance. And therefore, we are doing uh, the detections like you see here, uh, 3D bounding boxes on all the objects. And on the right side here, you see the bird eye view, each one, its location, orientation, exactly. This uh, thing is also working uh, in harsh conditions. Like for example, here you can see that it works at night. Uh, and we can manage and get the same uh, results also in these conditions. Also uh, in rain, for example, in this case, we didn't even have the proper uh, lens cover. So you see drops on the lens and still uh, in this condition, uh, it's working uh, quite well. Now, uh, one of the strengths of what we're doing is uh, detecting small obstacles. Look at this road here and far away on the road on the shadow here when, the, when I'm uh, pointing here, we placed two small obstacles on the road uh, in the shade of the trees. So it's hard to detect. One of them is, uh, hold on, one of them is a, a, a bucket and one is a, a teddy bear the size of a baby sitting, as you can see, very difficult to see. Now, if you look at the bottom image, you will see here that we, on a zoom camera, we saw, see the detection, yellow turning into blue, and again, yellow turning into blue. Yellow is, is uh, suspected is detected, and blue is confirmed detection. And, and if I will pause here, you will see that we, we were able to detect the teddy bear from 70, even more actually, 72 meters, when uh, this is the uh, view of the driver. Very difficult to distinguish if there's anything here on the shade of the tree. So this is just to show the strength of our uh, algorithms and capabilities and upsampling all together in uh, real life uh, detections, which are in some cases critical for safety. In this case, you see the strength of the upsampling on another case where on the top image, you see detection just by camera. And there is a, a poster here on the wall with images of cars and the image only detection detects that as a, a real cars. Uh, but on our system, it is detected as a flat image of a car because we see the full 3D in high resolution and we can distinguish, distinguish a real car here and a fake car here on the poster. So that's another strength of our technology. So just to summarize, uh, our solution is a, a, on one side a powerful uh, 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 perception uh, tool that can give you high performance, but also can be very efficient because we can work with low resolution uh, lidars and radar and still get high uh, performance results. So it eventually on the system uh, uh, cost you are gaining. And also it's important to, to say that this is a full, fully integrated system that can support many sensor sets. It can support level two uh, plus level three and up to level five and we can accommodate to different models and different sensor sets that you may have on your products. Thank you. Any questions? Um, so 
actually there is a no further question, but um, I'm going to explain in Korean. 네, 저 바이아비전 쪽에 더 추가 질문이 있으시면은 지금 약간 시간이 남아 있기 때문에 어더 저기 어 질문을 해, 해 주셨습니다. 네. 네. 어, 네, 이상, 네, 지금 질문을 계속 올려주시고요. 제가 뭐, 이제 좀 클로징 멘트로 해서 오늘 좀 마무리를 하겠습니다. 음, 그, 우선은 오늘 바쁘신데도 불구하고 이렇게 참가를 해주셔서 굉장히 감사합니다. 그래서 뭐, 요즘에 좀 여러 가지로 뭐, 코로나 바이러스 이런 것 때문에 좀 직접 이렇게 만나 뵙고 진행하는 게 어, 어려워서 이렇게 온라인으로 좀 많이 진행을 하게 됐는데, 어, 무엇보다 좀 이스라엘의 이런 좀 우수한 기술이 오늘 참가해 주신 모든 분들한테 좀 많이 어, 알려지고 좀더 이해가 깊고, 그 다음에 다음 단계 사업, 단, 다음 어, 사업 단계에서 충분히 검색화 될수 있고, 제일 궁극적으로는 사업화가 될수 있어서 양쪽 어, 기술이 어, 좀더잘 설명이 되, 어, 어, 협력이 될수 있도록 할수 있는 그런 계기가 되었으면 합니다. 어, 제가 이제, 어, 마, 마지막으로 드릴 말씀은 요 웨비나가 끝나고 나서 이메일로 별도로 어, 서베이를 드릴 겁니다. 그래서 그거를 한번 보시고, 가, 뭐, 시간이 오래 걸리지 않습니다. 간략하게 답변을 해 주시고, 그 다음에 추가로 필요하신, 좀 궁금하신 점, 그리고 어, 또 개별적인 업체와 별도 미팅을 원하시, 온라인으로 미팅을 원하시거나, 어, 아니면은 좀 다른 이스라엘 어떤 기술이라던가 업체와 연락이 필요하시거나 궁금하신 점 있으시면은 언제든지 제가 이메일에다가 제 연락처 기재해가지고 보내드릴 테니까요. 편하게 언제든지 연락을 주시면은 거기에 맞춰서 제가, 어, 그, 저 도움을 드릴 수 있도록 하겠습니다. 그리고 마지막으로 저희가, 어, 매월, 뭐 이미 받으시는 분들도 있겠, 있으시겠지만 저희가 매월 그 뉴스레터를 발행을 하고 있습니다. 그래서 이번 행사도 4월달 뉴스레터에 이제 담겨져서 이렇게 전달이 됐었는데, 그, 이런 관련 행사들, 특히 요즘에 이제 온라인으로 많이 진행이 되는데, 뭐 자동차 부분뿐만이 아니고, 뭐 사이버 보안이라던가, 뭐 농업 기술, 뭐 여러 분야에 대해서 유, 어, 이런 유사한 온라인 어, 세미나라든가 온라인 미팅을 진행하고 있습니다. 그래서 관련된 내용을 어, 모두 이렇게 뉴스레터에 담아서 어, 오늘 참가하신 분들 뿐만 아니라 또 주변에서 관심 있으신 분들 있으면 저한테 연락 주시면 은 같이 보여드릴 수, 보여드릴 수 있도록 그렇게 하겠습니다. So, j i n uh, let me interrupt yeah. you for a short while. Uh, I think there okay. is a, a final question to uh, Mr. Roni Cohen uh, to be answered live. Uh, Roni, can you answer shortly? Yes, uh, regarding hardware requirements for the algorithms, we are currently running on the NVIDIA. We can run everything in real time on multiple sensors on uh, NVIDIA 1080 board. However, our code is written in C++, bit exact, uh, compatible to the CUDA code, and it's ready to be ported to any other uh, platform, TI, Renaissance, or whatever you choose. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thank you, Oni. Thank you, all the companies. Uh, unless, uh, June, if you have anything uh, critical to add, I would like to conclude by saying thank you, first of all, to all the Israeli companies, all the Korean companies that join us today, our uh, friends and uh, colleagues from the Israeli Ministry of uh, Economy, from Israel Export Institute, of course, from Volkswagen Connect in Tel Aviv. Uh, I think it was a valuable uh, gathering, and I hope also that we will take the chance, as June mentioned in Korean, we will publish a survey to all the Korean participants uh, of this event today. We will ask their opinion, and also we'll, at, we'll ask their uh, wish to conduct some kind of a follow-up with, with, with each and every one of the Israeli companies that join us today. And by that, I would like to conclude, and thank you all once again. And I wish you a pleasant weekend and stay safe. Okay, goodbye. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.